<laughs> Hello everybody, thank you so much for coming and joining us today. Um, I am Sam Burgess, uh, but you may know me as Social Mouth Sam on Instagram, or you may even recognise my voice because I'm the host of the Small and Mighty podcast, which is an iTunes Top 40. Um, today, we're here to talk about a really super hot topic, which I imagine is why you're all here. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to um, grow your presence on social media um, and basically kind of answer any kind of queries that you might have in terms of how to get started. So, I've been building my brand purely online and on social media as a social media consultant helping creative small businesses, just like you guys. Um, and. I help you find your voice online and speak directly to your customers. Um, next to me, I have Sarah Tippett. Sarah is the ex-fashion editor of Wedding Magazine. Sarah went freelance a year ago to launch Bridal Editor, a purely fashion-led bridal site aimed at helping brides to discover their dream big day style items. This site also offers free digital bridal tool, Bridal Finder, where Sarah personally helps brides find style pieces they're struggling to locate for their wedding day. Next to Sarah, we have another Sarah, so Sarah Hamilton. Uh, Sarah is an artist, designer, and founder of the really inspiring Just a Car campaign, which you'll see just over there. Um, Sarah will be able to tell us a little bit more about how she's used social media, to, along with her team, to create viral content to promote the Just a Car campaign, uh, which was uh, at Indie Friday, amongst other initiatives. And then on the end, last but by no means least, we have Lucy Heath of Captured by Lucy. Lucy is a multi-award winning lifestyle blogger and photographer, and you may be familiar with Lucy's vinyl backdrops, which are a must-have for any Instagrammer taking photos of products at home. So now you know who we are, we're going to kick off by talking a little bit about social media, and I think the first question would be what channels we use on a day-to-day -day basis for our businesses and why. And I'm going to hand that over to Sarah. Hi guys, hope this is, tell me if you can't hear me, I'm doing this wrong. Um, so obviously I work within the wedding, the bridal industry, um, which is incredibly visual. Um, so I guess I kind of use as many channels as I do Instagram, Twitter, Facebook and Pinterest. Um, but for me, obviously Instagram is probably fits right in in terms of the visual kind of content and I, I, and I know a lot of brides use Pinterest as well but for me uh, Instagram is definitely proving to be my most useful tool. Hi there, um, yeah we're, we're a bit different really because of Just A Card campaign we really need to get a message out there and we use Twitter and Instagram mostly but Twitter is actually more uh, relevant to us because we really, really rely on other people retweeting and tweeting about the campaign. It's slightly less easy to share. I mean, I know there's reposts on Instagram, but it's not quite as... I mean, for example, one tweet we got 350 retweets just about the, the um, shop stickers, and we're really trying to make this campaign something that everybody can share rather than just... We're not, I mean, if you look at our Instagram, it's full of wonderful images, but it's, the last thing in the world it is, is a beautifully created, curated Instagram. It's a hodgepodge of what we can grab and borrow and beg, which is beautiful and wonderful, but it's nothing, you know, it's not all beautiful and, um, and, 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 and curated. It's, it's absolutely about getting a message across. So we use Facebook a little bit, but I am, and when we do, we get really a lot of shares, but really it's Twitter and Instagram for us. I, I think with Twitter, just interjecting, if you have something that you want to share, whether it's a campaign or, or something like that, I think because it is so easy, you've just got to tap that retweet button and it's gone. Well, if you want to share on Instagram, you've got to screenshot it, you've got to tag it, you've got to filter it, you've got to do all of that. So for you guys, it's totally about getting message spread. So if you want awareness, then Twitter is 100% I mean, Instagram okay. is huge. I mean, when we did, we did Just a Card Day and we did Indie Friday, and they were, our Instagram was like, I mean, my phone was basically just one, <laughs> one moving, it moved from one part of my living room to the other. It was going so much. It was massive on Indie Friday and on Just a Card Day, but getting the message out there, it's a combination of the two. And I think everybody should use both. I think. I think Twitter really is about the social and social media. It's yeah. not about, hey, I look really, really pretty. It's like, hey, we're really trying to say something that's important. So, oh, um, so for me, 
Um, Facebook is really important, but weirdly, it's not really about me sharing on my Facebook page. It's me being active in Facebook groups um, because I'm selling a product um, that other people hopefully will want to use for their own product images. It's nice when it's recommended in a group. It's important that I'm active and replying and commenting. Um, but definitely, for me, Instagram is the main um, platform in terms of awareness of people sharing it on their stories and sharing backdrops um, in their photos or they've gone to a workshop and they might have seen them. Um, so for me, having that kind of real sort of daily presence um, is important in whether it be a story or a main gallery post. Well, we've touched on stories already, which is good. Um, for me, I use Instagram. It's my main channel. It's where I get the majority of my business. Uh, I think about 95% of my website traffic comes directly from Instagram. Um, but for me, Instagram stories are now more important. Um, and it is the big thing for 2018. It's video content. You need to be creating Instagram stories. So for me, that's where I spend most of my time. I put stories up every day. And I'm like Lucy, I spend a lot of time in Facebook groups. I have my own group, but then I spend time in entrepreneur groups and small business groups. And I'm not there selling my service. Obviously, people naturally will click on you and want to learn about who you are and what you do. But it's about being part of a community and saying like, hey, I'm just like you guys, but you know what? I can help you. Um, and you build friendships that way. So I definitely use groups. Yeah, I was just going to say as well, Instagram stories has been really... Um, a great kind of tool for me as well because um, it's great having that ability to go live and maybe if I'm at a bridal catwalk show I can kind of take my bridal readers along with me and they can kind of view it from my perspective and see the dresses as I see them and like get all the new kind of behind the scenes action as well so they kind of get that kind of special viewpoint so it's been really beneficial for me. I would totally agree with that like you're your customers want to be part of your brand. They don't want to be window shoppers, like outside that luxury store peering through like, oh, am I allowed in or do I need to have a bank statement to prove that I can afford to shop here? They want to be a part of your brand and they want to feel like a VIP. So going live and doing Instagram stories and letting your audience see how you see things through your eyes is, is really important in making them part of your brand. Um, I don't know, how, does everybody use Instagram stories who have an Instagram account? Do you find the views are much higher than your engagement on your thing? I do. Yeah, so Instagram stories are being shown to people who don't follow you, they're at the top, and that's yeah. really important because you're hitting new people every time you share a story. Um, so I definitely think it's, you know, the way forward of, and also I am, you know, like Sarah was saying, beautiful pictures, I, I am really precious about my main gallery. Um, I work as a photographer, it's my kind of shop window, but stories lets you be much less precious mm -hmm. and people will embrace it. And in fact, I don't know about you, but when I see, say, a big um, household name and they've put a story up and it's a professionally edited shop video, I swipe away, which, because for me, stories is that more raw, um, less edited, more free content. So I would embrace it. I think what's key to, to remember as well with stories, I mean, the algorithm, I'm sure lots of you have heard about Instagram algorithms and have frustrations because your content's not shown. The Instagram stories algorithm is completely separate to the gallery algorithm and only 250 million users, so there's 800 million Instagram users, only around 250 million are creating content on a daily basis, so you have a lot less people to fight with for your content to be seen. So adopt it now and start getting really good at creating content for stories. And then when everybody else eventually joins in, you're gonna be ranking a lot higher than them. So there's even more reason if you wanna be seen and you feel that your gallery pictures are not being seen, like jump in on stories now. Yeah, I, I would add to that. One of the things that I found a bit frustrating when we've been doing a few of the promotional things is there are big, uh, Instagram people who say, oh, I really, really would love to talk about you, but there's, well, pay me, but we ain't got no money, so <laughs> they're not going to get anywhere with that. But a lot of, loads of people did Instagram stories about Indie Friday, and 
there's nothing, there was nothing really to say. There was no beautiful image. That, I mean, we had lots of designs, but there wasn't any fantastic images to go with it. It was just like people talking about it. And it was absolutely through the roof on a couple of days before, before Indie Friday. And we've got a lot of people that they say, oh, you know, I'm quite precious about my general gallery. And actually, we don't want to, you know, suddenly be pink in your beautiful blue gallery or blue in your blue or grey or whatever. But suddenly, <coughs> if, you, if you, you, you can use the story to say, to talk about the campaign, well, actually, that's been absolutely huge for us. Amazing. While you've still got the mic, Sarah, obviously you had a, an event that came up, which was Indie Friday. Talking about how you plan for these events, did you have a content strategy <laughs> and think about when your tweets were going to go out, your Facebook posts, your Instagram Okay, posts? I'm telling you a secret. <laughs> Nobody can hear this. We have no strategy whatsoever. The only strategy we have is we really, really care about our message, which is support independent shops, and we will do anything. Beg, borrow, steal, plead do it in six o'clock in the morning, in the middle of making the dinner, after halfway through feeding the cat. There is no rhyme, no reason, but people are getting the message. So if you, I can't plan things. I just know where I want to go. I'm a cancer, I'm a crab, you know. I don't walk straight. <laughs> the power of passion, though. I think that's what's really key on social as well. It's, it's passion, it's connecting with your community, showing your enthusiasm. And if you're enthusiastic, then your audience will be enthusiastic. And before you know it, you've got yourself a ton of customers. And in terms of planning, I know I definitely have been affected by the algorithms last summer. But in a way, it's quite helpful because people aren't being shown things in a chronological order anymore. So I woke up on Saturday, first thing I do, you know, roll over, look at the phone, check Instagram. One of my favourite accounts is, oh, Monday again, that weekend went so fast, blah, 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 blah. I thought, oh, I've only just woken up on a Saturday. So in some ways, um, it's helped me not to be so rigid thinking, okay, sort of half my followers are based in America and they wake up at a different time than we do, so me getting into this very prescriptive, I must post by 7am in the morning and if I don't post by then no one will see it, actually that's made that a lot freer. So that's been a good thing. That is, yeah. It, I think the algorithm, the reason they changed the algorithm was because they wanted to level the playing field. They didn't just want Taylor Swift and Beyonce to be the only people whose content was ever seen. So for a small business, it actually benefited us all because we weren't fighting anymore against people who had armies of social media people managing it for them. Um, but there are also downsides from it, which we could talk about all day, but um, I was going to stick with the positives. <laughs> how about you, Sarah? How do you plan? Um, I, do quite, I do tend to schedule, like, in terms of Twitter and Facebook, I do tend to often schedule... Do you um, use it all? I use Hootsuite. Okay. Um, but, I mean, it, it also, that kind of takes a lot of time, so it's great if I've got a day in the office, I can schedule my content, and then at least I know that I've got content um, driving traffic to my site. But then I can also, I don't, I'm not um, like crazily rigid because I like to do kind of reactive posting as well and yeah. to keep it fresh and like, you know, if there's a specific event on, then, you know, that will create content. And then, yeah, I just kind of go with the flow and react to things as they come up as well. I think it's important because you've obviously got certain things that you can schedule, but you want to be able to react to things that are happening, that are current affairs. Like if it's relevant to your business, you want to talk about it. Um, you know, on a negative, you know, when we've had you know disasters and things in the country, there's been a lot of bad PR about businesses who continue to post and sell and post and sell and not pay attention to the fact that something huge happened in the country. So it, it is important, although, to use automation tools to help make your life easier, that you still need to to be present and be reacting on a day-to-day -day basis and deleting or, or removing things from your scheduler if it's no longer relevant. I would add, but there's one, I, I, I sort of slightly told her, Porky, and that I do work for another company, I do social media for them, and I do use a scheduler, and I don't know if any of you have heard of one called Meet Edgar, there's a, you, you've heard of it, it, it's not popular, it won't work for the, for the campaign because it's, we have to pay for it, it's 35 quid. But if you, we, we do schedule a lot of tweets by that because you can do a rolling program of tweets, 
so you just schedule a week and it sends us back. And so long as you really keep an eye on it, so half of your tweets are scheduled just to say these are our Instagram or these are these, and you come in and intersperse it with the human side of you. I think it's actually for, for what we do with the other job that I do. And actually, um, if I had any money, I would probably buy that for just a card. Does it recycle? Does it recycle? Yeah, just re you get a library of tweets. Yeah. You see. And for, for example, we really want to say to people, we have, you know, what our Instagram handle is, that we have posters to download on our website, that we're going to have free shop stickers. That's never going to change. That, that will, that's something that we could be telling people twice a day, every single day. And we need to, and it's just I, you know, we those at the moment I don't schedule because they're, they're paid. But you know, if everyone, if anyone wants to give us thirty-five quid a month, if, you know, you know what, where I'll put it. Um, I was just going to say, in terms of how I plan, in terms of my own mind, I always think of it as a magic nine on Instagram. So nine that flow together all the time. So I'll always try and have um, a landscape. A front door sounds really cliche, but it works. Um, you know, I will have one that maybe has either the kids' hands or our Westies. We have two Westie dogs who are like babies and they love being dressed up, and that's always really popular. Um, and I love it because it's really fun. But I have this kind of rolling nine. And did anyone do that best of nine app? And so there's a website, bestofnine.com, and it'll tell you what your most popular posts were of the year. And you can see then what people like. Do they like to see the overhead flat list type images? Do they prefer to see you in the in the photographs? Was it was it a something where you're trying to sell the product or not? And that can really shape your kind of magic nine. Just to jump in on that, as a business, it can be quite hard. So my yeah. best my best nine were all Barbie pink houses. Yeah. I'm not an estate agent for Barbie, so therefore I would love to just deliver pink houses and flowers as my content, but unfortunately I am a business and I am selling, so I know that it's really important that I constantly intersperse that, and I kind of call them the sort of, they're, the, they're always really high engagement, they're, like filler. They're, yeah, they're filler images, and I know that you know I'm going to get loads of comments and loads of new followers, but they're not going to be my customers, and that's fine. Um, so you just have to make sure you intersperse the content your audience wants, but you still have to remember why you're there and that your social media is a marketing tool. So I, I think the whole front door thing, people do love it. I love it. I like I engage with those places. But if you make all these beautiful greetings cards that are behind us, I would take them out in an area where you know has some really nice coloured doors or in the aesthetic if there's a hot you know, a pink door that's really popular, you can take your card and take a picture in front of it and then your product is still the main image but you've got that kind of background that's going to get people stopping scrolling. 100%, 100%. Um, we've mentioned like how we schedule Facebook and how we schedule like Twitter and stuff. Do we all use planning tools for Instagram? So I use Planoly to schedule, well not I don't schedule it but I just plan out what my grid's going to look like. How about you guys? I don't actually. I. No, God. no I, d I don't use any kind of planning tool. I more look at mine, um, I always like mine to be very colourful. I offer product photography for people. So if I made my gallery very white or very um, blue or pink or whatever it may be, it will only suit a certain type of plant or it will only make them you know, a certain client interested. So I want to keep mine very fluid. So, But I tend to try and go, if you look back, there'll be sort of a blue kind of week and then it'll go into an orangey and then at Christmas it was very greens and golds and now we'll come into the new year and I want the gallery to feel more fresh. So I'm bringing in fresher colours, but it all has a flow. That's what I would say, kind of underlying, not highly manipulative, but a subtle, a nice subtle flow. Nice. So I, I ran, run um, five Instagram accounts. Um, of course. Um, the Just a Card one is just a hodgepodge of everything that we do. And as I said, there's no planning. I'm also an artist and designer, and I'm much, much, much more fussy on that, so, which is fundamentally what I do as an artist and designer, and the campaign is a result of being passionate about the shops and art and design. On my, on my personal Instagram and on my book Instagram, that's much more beautiful and curated because I'm quite fussy on that one. It's just the just a card is just about a message. My Instagram for my bit for my work is very much just about my exhibitions and my artwork and you know, showing people my printmaking and print artwork. So that's very different and a bit more, little, much less ma ma manic. I have to tell you.
Um, actually, my feed's very, very curated. <laughs> but I, I don't actually use a planning tool for it. Um, it's incredibly pink, um, but then it's kind of interspersed with, because obviously bridal is very ivory and white, um, so it's got that running through it as well. Um, but I mean, I've never kind of, I think I tried the planning tool that you, but I kind of, I don't know, I don't know if I just preferred the freedom of going at it kind of thing. And then, but I mean, the thing that I do do and I, that I love doing is actually getting lost down the Instagram rabbit hole um, because you end up just finding so many inspiring accounts and so many inspiring people. And I definitely set time aside for this because I, it's endless, the discoveries. And I think when I see something and I want to repost it, I'll screen grab it and then it's in my own photo media photos. And then I, it kind of builds up from there and then I kind of bring it into the Instagram. So, you know, I kind of know my set of colours and I know that it's going to work. So... How about hashtags? Do we plan out what hashtags we're going to use or do we just kind of go for it? So I definitely have a set that I like to use, but you don't want to use the same set over and over because the algorithm recognises that and will say, you just type these in in a copy and paste, you're not actually engaging. So big recommendation would be any hashtag you're using, spend you know, a few minutes afterwards and go into that hashtag and like some of the photos and genuinely like them. and you will, it's a ripple isn't it, you'll find more people who are like-minded and content that you enjoy but also um, the actual Instagram weekend hashtag project is a really good one to join in on. If you actually look at the number of people who join in, it's actually quite small. I think when I looked yesterday um, at this weekend's weekend hashtag projects, they do a specific hashtag for each weekend and then they'll choose one. There was about 7,000 posts which, you think, how many millions of people follow Instagram in total? And most of them aren't even actually following the rules. Like, I say about half of it are actually yeah. eligible to be picked yeah. to win. So I think that's a really nice one when you're planning. Um, and, and they do, it's not just about trying to get featured by them, because that's, you know, really impossible. But it's about finding more like-minded people who are going to like your content. And it's, a, it's that ripple. Definitely, definitely. Anybody else's hashtags? For me, I have about uh, 60 to 90 hashtags. Um, I mix them up so that I have I have them all saved in notes on my iPhone, and then I kind of pick 10 from one, like 10 from another, and 10 from another group. So each time they're always different, and they're all like a variable. Whether it's I'm targeting creative businesses or shops, or it's pictures of front doors, or or anything like that, so that I can keep it really varied. Um, my kind of top tip with hashtags would be try and avoid any tags over a million posts. Um, once you go over a million, that's when the spammers come and that's when the hashtags get closed down temporarily by Instagram while they do a bit of a tidy up and that's where the famous shadow ban has come from. People hear about shadow bans where you don't show up under hashtags and it's not because necessarily you've done anything wrong, it's just that they're tidying up some hashtags just as inappropriate content has been posted under it. Um, so if you just avoid using tags that have over a million posts, you won't get caught up in the shadow ban. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I, I do something similar to you. I like to keep it random, keep it, but obviously I have those which are related to my industry, which I keep to. Um, the other good thing about hashtags is um, you might have something similar in your industry. So like with the wedding industry, we have um, like wedding hour on uh, a Wednesday at 9 p.m., which is hashtag wedding hour. So this is a great opportunity to use the hashtag for your industry and engage with people and... I mean, I've engaged and I've like met new businesses and gained, gained a lot of followers from it. So it's definitely worth, you know, hunting down if there's something similar like that that you can engage with, like at a certain time. Yeah, I think when it comes to finding hashtags, that's normally the number one question I get is, how do I find hashtags? And there's kind of a few different ways. Uh, the first is look at your competitors, see what they're using. The second one is look at um, influencers and people who your audience are probably following because you don't want to just be using hashtags like hashtag card, hashtag pink, hashtag love. You want to be using community-based hashtags and community-based hashtags are normally used a lot by influencers. So if you go after influencers, you're likely to find some good hashtags. And my kind of secret website that I use is called For Display Purposes. 
um, and you can put in one hashtag and it will generate similar, similar hashtags for you. You just have to be really careful, just make sure you check the hashtags and don't just copy and paste them because um, sometimes it gets it wrong because obviously it's a computer um, and some of them can be like Russian hashtags or Chinese hashtags which might be great if that's the audience you're trying to penetrate but if it's not then uh, you might have a load of followers that you don't want. <laughs> And there's two, um, there's two people I know of who are really generous, two um, influencers who, if you sign up to their newsletter, they do a sort of monthly new hashtag community. So one is um, me and Orla, um, Sarah Tasker, she does a hashtag newsletter that you can sign up and she picks out 10, 20 kind of smaller hashtag communities. And then Emily Quinton of makelight.com and she also has a you know, rolling monthly newsletter with new hashtags and that's a really good way. There's also a lovely one, which is quite a small, smaller community group called um, Whips and Blooms. So if, you're floor, if you, you know, like sharing behind the scenes and you've got some petals somewhere near you, then Whips and Blooms, W-I-P, that's a lovely one um, to, to follow. Excellent. Um, any top tips? What would be your kind of like number one top tip for small businesses starting out on Instagram or any social media really? My absolute top tip is even if you find it incredibly scary, it's incredibly important to get on Instagram and Twitter, even if you never post. I went to um, Design Junction, not very, um, one of the shows, and I, there was a guy whose work was absolutely beautiful. And I said, oh, I really want to tweet about it. He said, I haven't got a Twitter handle. So I've got, across a number of, of um, accounts, I've got loads and loads of Twitter followers. He missed out on me recommending. Doesn't even matter if he had five followers. He would get the benefit of me telling a hell of a lot of people about his, um, his, what he did just by having an account. So don't get scared of it. Make an account today, now, and I, I've talked to people now, just a card here, and there's a number of the shops don't even have a Twitter or... A, you look rubbish. <laughs> you need it. Even if... I'm sorry to say that, but I'm not being funny. You don't... You don't need to use it, even if it scares you. I completely understand it scares you. Not many, not many people are as into it, maybe. But just have it, so that people can say, there's shops there that I would absolutely love to say, oh, your shops are lovely. If I could just in tweet them, oh, do go see that lovely shop in you know, Cardiff or something like that, I'd love to just point people in the direction. We've got loads of followers. It's, you're just missing out on other people. And even better than you bigging your own work up, if somebody else bigs your own work, your work up, you're more likely to get support. So if you're not doing it, you're missing the biggest trick in the book. I'm sorry to tell you, but I really, really am sorry. To and it's trick. free. It's a free platform. How many things are free these days? Like, it's a free platform. And like Sarah said, even if you don't want to use it, if you just create an account and put your website in the URL, then at least people can come and find you because you'll find a lot of consumers will look you up on social media before deciding to buy from you and if you're not if they can't find you i almost feel like you don't look very legit yeah and one other thing i'd really like to say is we we are followed by loads of shops and we're always retweeting them and telling people about them when i go to somebody's instagram account and they're a shop and they're trying to promote yourself and if you go bricks and mortar shop linfield you think where on earth is linfield if you've got a shop, right, Linfield, Hampshire, UK, or something like that, because it could be anywhere, it could be Australia. It's bonkers when people just write, you know, some place, there's millions of little tiny towns. You don't know where you are, but if I was in Somerset and I was looking for a lovely shop, and I saw Linfield, Somerset, I'd think, oh great, I must go and look at that shop. So they're tiny tricks, but they're, big, they're a big deal. Go on, Lucy, what's your tip? I would use, okay, so one of my tips would be, um, I think blogging as part of your business is still really important and it's something that I've definitely let go um, and I'm not using it, but what I've used instead, because everybody, if you're running your own shop or website, you're basically everything, you're an accountant at this time of year, you're a photographer, you're a salesperson, you're the designer, you're everything, plus you're everything in your real life, um, you know, aside from your working life, so... For me, I've used um, social media, especially Instagram, as almost like a micro-blogging platform to use that caption as a sort of mini-blog post each time. 
and I think you know, getting more, you know, having the ability to use more characters on Twitter now, I would use them. People enjoy sitting. It's this, it's a sort of ritual I have of sitting and looking through Instagram, and I read all the captions, and then I'll reply. And I think having a story behind your product image um, is great, and it doesn't have to necessarily be by this because of this. It can just be it's a picture that goes with what you're doing and talking about that day. I think also, like, I might go blog as well, because we live in a world where people are so time pressured. And to read a blog post, you know, you, you go on their website, you find the blog, you read their blog post. We just don't seem to have time for that, as well as checking our social media, checking our emails, writing our own social content. It seems to be that it's easy, bite-sized kind of snippets and nuggets that people can just quickly absorb and move on to the next thing and, and that's why it's been such a rise in audio as well in podcasts because you can do it you can listen to it while doing something else and um, it, it's sad that we just don't have the time anymore but that's how yeah, it is but it's making the most of sorry it's making the most of um making the most of the time you have and i think i i don't know if you've been to other social media talks and i i go to them and I put myself on workshops and I feel like I'm kind of that anti-niche police whereas I know a lot of the advice is you have to have a niche, you have to have a niche and instead I kind of think of it, you know, the sort of Venn diagrams of the, you know, circles and I want to be a circle in amongst lots and lots of other circles so I want to have contact with people who are here at Top Draw, um, who are designers and makers who are taking their own product images and they might be interested in the backdrops but I also want to be active in um, the parent blogging community in the UK, which is where I started, because they're all doing reviews and um, product pictures now, and um, I want to be active in food communities for those, you know, the viral videos you see on Facebook of the, you know, recipes that all speed up, you know. So I want to think about myself as like a little Venn diagram that I cover. I'm kind of a little bit active in as many communities communities as I can be. I always tell my clients to think of your business as a magazine and not as a catalogue. If you're on Instagram and you're just posting product pictures, you're a catalogue. You're selling. That's really boring. If you pick up a glossy monthly magazine, I'd say the majority of us skip the first 25% because it's all adverts. But then when you get further in and there's an editor's pick and she's telling you you need that floral hammer you need it because it's really hot for spring and summer, suddenly you really want it. But when you were in the beginning of the magazine and it was an advert, you weren't interested. So you have to think about what your audience is interested in beyond your product. And like Lucy was saying, you know, it, it could be food, it could be parenting. You need to think of yourself as so much more than just your, your product. What else is your audience interested in? Um, I don't know about everyone else, but I launched my product business only a year ago, and I'm not really at the stage where I can, you know, we touched on, can you, you know, a sponsored post on someone's Instagram, and rightly so, people should be paid for, for an advert on their channels, but for me, I'm not really at the stage where I can afford to have this huge marketing budget, so what I, I like to do is offer press samples, and that's what everyone who you can see behind us could do, you can have a set of samples that you loan out to people and they can send them back to you and I send my tubes with the postage already in there but they're then used at workshops, at events, um, in shoots, in all sorts and that's kind of my way that I'm getting the product out there um, and people are seeing it without that huge commitment to a big marketing budget that might not be available um, for everybody right now. One, one point I'd like to make as well is that we've got um, a blog at Just a Card which is, tells a lot of it, um, independent makers and, and shops, etc., a lot of business tips um, and advice. Um, and one of the things that we say regularly is retweeting and sharing content makes you look good. It's really, really nice not to sit there and go, me, 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 me. And the amount of people who say to us, oh my gosh, I absolutely love your campaign and they like our tweets. And I just want to, sometimes when I've worked so hard to get the campaign message out there, I want to throw the phone across because just telling me you like it and pressing like isn't going to help us get the message out there. If you really like it, retweet it. Press the button that says retweet because it tells everybody about what something you're passionate about and it really is about engaging and sharing and not being all about you. It's about a community. 
um, picking up on what you were saying earlier about imagery and also having an Instagram account for your business or Twitter or whatever. So I've worked in the magazine industry for quite a few years now and I know as a journalist if I'm looking to include products in a wedding magazine, say the stationery and whatever, then I will find people on Instagram that I want to potentially, if I'm drawn in by your amazing imagery, then I'm going to hunt deeper and kind of, you know, probably get in touch with you and want to feature you in the magazine. Um, and another tip I would definitely say for people trying to get their work featured in the magazine, if you're a small business and you want to get your work out there, is it's great sending an email um, kind of thing or sending over your social media and stuff but do you send things in the post as well because when it lands on someone's desk when it lands, when I get like a little I don't know pack of stationery from a wedding um, stationery designer and it lands on physically on my desk then I'm like oh what is this like you get to it's much more exciting so I would definitely definitely do that and definitely have an Instagram account yeah, well, because we run a campaign that's called Just a Card, I wanted to get on BBC Radio. And I thought, this person gets hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of emails and tweets and things, please feature me, please feature me. So I thought, oh, I'll go one better. I wrote them a letter. I wrote them a really lovely card. And I wrote, this is Just a Card, to say, please feature our campaign, Just a Card. Well, it was a lot more, more successful. So um, before we kind of wrap up with what we'll be focusing on this year, is there any questions that anyone would like to ask us? Thanks for all your uh, comments, it's very interesting. I wonder if the panel could tell us what um, viral moment was most important for them in their social media. Um, I, because I have a podcast, um, my podcast went viral uh, recently. I interviewed um, Richard Huntington from Saatchi and Saatchi, he's the chairman of Saatchi and Saatchi, and he uh, did a, an interview with me sharing his big brand tips, because he works with massive brands for small businesses. Um, that went viral, but it actually went viral on Twitter uh, rather than Instagram. Again, it's that whole reposting, resharing. Um, it also did really well on LinkedIn just because of the, the type of industry it was in. And I think it's really important. I make sure I'm in all social media platforms because I get clients from all different different backgrounds. Um, so for me, that was really recent and it hit over a million impressions, which was amazing in 24 hours. And it's by far my most listened to podcast. Because I had the right influences and people were sharing it, because the content was of value to my audience, they wanted to share it with their audience. Um, and I was very fortunate that like, Saatchi and Saatchi actually retweeted it and shared it. And obviously they've got like 50, 60, I think it's like 80,000 followers, something like that. So little things like that can make a really big impact. I haven't really had anything that's gone crazy viral at the moment. However, as soon as... Um I think it's that retweeting again, it's this sharing thing. So like, I did a tweet that went quite well recently um, because it was retweeted by Topshop because there was an event uh, with Most Curious, which is an alternative wedding show. Um, and they were having like a small kind of pop-up in their store in flagship inn um, on Oxford Street. And I got a whole insane load of impressions just because of that retweet. So it's kind of always tag in your brands that's a huge thing. If you're just tweeting and not tagging in your brand, you're not going to get retweet because they're not going to know. One of the things that we do on Just a Card regularly and is really, really successful I, I, is I, I, if I pick a really relevant tweet, I, I pin it and I say, please, 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 can you pin, can you retweet our pinned tweet? And that's where we get the most, that's where we get hundreds and hundreds of retweets because we just tweet please pin, retweet our pin tweet. And then once, once I've got a pin tweet that's gone really manic and done really, really well, I'll just change it and then I'll say back, we've got a new pin tweet. Can we get loads and loads of shares? And we've got, you know, the one that's up there at the moment, and you can retweet it, please, is, um, it's got over 420 retweets. So if you share it, we want to get 2,000. If anybody wants to help us get 2,000, please retweet it. Um, I think for me, it's really important to think, what is viral to you? what would be viral to your business? Because for me, there's a post that I 
um, did years ago um, that has done really well on Pinterest, but for me, really well means a few hundred people every week come to the site because of that post. And it was, I did a, a cocktail recipe that tasted like a tiramisu. And I got my husband to hold up my granny's old fake fur coat as the backdrop that was all blurry in the distance. Um, and that was and created a lovely image. But it was actually, that's what inspired the next, you know, the next thing. So I think viral doesn't need necessarily have to be thousands and millions and whatever. It, it can just be driving the right audience of people. And that's my thing is, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to drive traffic? Or are you trying to build an audience which can be more targeted and smaller? Or are you trying to do a big mix of both? So for me, I want that audience who are like-minded, who are going to find me once and come back to me again or recommend me, or when they open their product, the packaging, they're going to share it on stories, rather than just driving just huge traffic for a spike and then those people disappear, which lots of people I know have had that kind of feature by Instagram and they've had this huge inflated following for a few days and then they lose them all as people go in. So I think, yeah, it's working out what would be viral for you, which might be 10 people share something or, you know, just setting your own sort of goals for you. Any other questions? Don't be afraid. <laughs> you won't find. Of course, yeah, if anyone wants to come and chat with us then by all means. But um, I think the last thing, I think it's just what we're going to focus on this year. Um, so for me, I've mentioned it before, it's all about Instagram stories this year. That's what I'm focusing all my attention on and I will be actively creating content and thinking about what I'm going to be sharing. How about you guys? Yeah, video definitely, that kind of behind the scenes video. I, I look at all these incredible illustrators in, in this room and it, I find it hypnotic watching an illustrator at work, kind of watching you um, paint or watching you create a colour of watercolours. Or all of that is just wonderful, beautiful, unique to you content. Showing it's not giving away trade secrets, but it's that kind of. Um, has anyone watched a calligrapher? You know, there's a few calligraphers I've found. Oh my gosh, I could just watch it over and over because it's so therapeutic to watch. And I think. That's really easy content. All you need is a tripod from Amazon and your phone. And that's all you need. As long as you can, you, you know, there's an editing app, nine movies on the phone. Um, but yeah, that kind of work in progress, I think that's selling your product, but in a slightly different way that's more kind of touchy feeling. Well, what, what I'm going to focus on in about five minutes is going and nabbing Sam because she really is the queen of Instagram stories and I'm going to ask her a few tips. In the meantime, I'd like to just very, very quickly say we, if you're an independent shop or an arts designer, we are just there with just a card, that's the team. Please can you come and pick up your independent shop stickers for your windows and post about them and tell the world about them and uh, that's it from us. Um, I'll be definitely focusing on what I was talking about earlier about the imagery. So for me, it's providing amazing inspirational imagery for brides, especially on Instagram. So creating my own content that is new and will help followers engage with me. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.